MacBook Pro 13 inch versus 15 inch 2018, which one should you guys get? So Apple currently sells quite the number of MacBooks. So uh, there's the MacBook Air, which hasn't been updated since 2015. And the design and the display were last updated in 2010. So whatever you do, do not buy a MacBook Air. And then there's a 12 inch MacBook. So this is Apple's thinnest MacBook that they sell. And it seems like someone messed up the naming scheme quite badly because the Air was supposed to be the thinnest one. Reason why, you know, it was called the Air in the first place. But I do like this one a lot. It's insanely thin. But yeah, you guessed it, it's not that powerful. So it runs a processor that's actually weaker than the one inside your smartphone. So if all you do is web browsing and answering a few emails, uh, in that case, it's fine. But also in that case, you might be better off with a tablet, just saying. So in the end, if you want to get some actual work done, uh, your only option is to get the MacBook Pro. And this one comes in two sizes, a 13 inch, which is this one right here, and the 15 inch, which is this one right here. So many people think that uh, the main difference between the two is actually the size, but actually that's the smallest difference between these two. So this is why I'm making this video. This is the ultimate comparison between a 13-inch MacBook Pro and the 15-inch 2018. And here's everything you need to know. Uh, also subscribe and hit the notifications if you're new to the channel and you want to see more in-depth tech videos like this one is going to be in a few seconds. Yeah, grab some snacks, sit back, relax, and let's have a look. Now, first things first, Apple actually sells two of these 13-inch MacBook Pros. One of them comes with no touch bar and two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and the other one comes with a touch bar and four Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is the one that I have here. And the no touch bar model hasn't been updated in 2018 at all, so that's still 2017 model. Do not buy it because it's going to be either updated soon or even removed altogether because, you know, it comes with a dual-core processor. And, you know, it doesn't really qualify as a pro device. So in this video, I'll be focusing on this thing. This is a 2018 13-inch model with a touch bar. Okay, so first of all, you're probably all wondering, how would these fit into your backpack? How portable is the 15-inch when compared to the 13-inch? Well, here's the 12-inch MacBook versus the 13-inch MacBook versus the 15-inch MacBook, so all of them. And here you can see the size difference between the 12-inch and the 13-inch is actually smaller than the size difference between the 13-inch and the 15 inch. The 13 inch MacBook Pro actually weighs in at 1.37 kilograms versus 1.83 on the 15 inch model. Uh, it might not seem like a big difference, but actually when you're talking about, you know, portable devices that you carry around with you in your bag, every single gram counts. And essentially, if you're a student or someone who needs to carry around their laptop every single day, then the 13 inch MacBook Pro makes the most amount of sense. But then if you're like me and you mostly work from your office desk connected to a monitor, uh, and you only take your MacBook with you a few times a month or even less, uh, the 15-inch MacBook Pro is still portable enough for that. In fact, did you actually know that this 15-inch MacBook Pro is actually the most portable 15-inch laptop on the market thanks to its size, its weight, and its thickness? Speaking of the thickness, the 13-inch model is actually a bit thinner than the 15-inch one by 0.06 millimeters. So yeah, not a huge difference at all. It's just something that I wanted to mention. Now, something that you would notice between these two uh, when it comes to the design is just how much more uniform the 13-inch model looks when compared to the 15-inch. So they actually have the exact same keyboard size, even though the 15-inch is larger, the same touch bar size, which basically means that a 15-inch model would have a lot of blank space on the chassis, even though uh, it, on the inside, this thing actually is fully used. On the outside, it does look a bit like wasted space Space, especially if you compare the top portions of these two. Just take a look at how much space there is between the touch bar and the display on the 15 inch model versus the 13 inch model. Now you do get a larger trackpad with a 15 inch, but even the 13 inch already has the largest trackpad on any 13 inch laptop, which is also the best one out there. So there are no real downsides to that. So yeah, portability and design wise, the 13 inch wins. But in terms of everything else, the 15 inch is so, so much better. So for example, they both have some incredible speakers, literally the best ones on any laptop at the moment. And they actually got even better with the 2018 models thanks to that T2 chip. And the fact that they're actually now linked to the power directly um, and the speakers themselves have been redesigned internally as well. But the 15 inch model does have better speakers since, you know, it's a larger device. So here's a speaker comparison between the two and let me know in the comments which one do you think sounds better. Obviously the 15 inch, but yeah. <laughs> When 
another area in which the 15 inch is better is when it comes to the display. So they both have literally the same panel, kind of. So it's a DCI-P3 panel with amazing color reproduction, 500 nits of brightness. So they're both great outdoors. And they both feature the new True Tone display technology, which same as on the iPad Pros or the iPhone 10 or the iPhone 8, they actually adjust their color temperature of the display to actually match the lighting conditions outside. So if you're in a yellow environment, so to say, and with yellow lighting, the display would turn yellow. If you're in an environment with white light, cool light, it would turn white. Basically like an actual piece of paper would, but you want to have that disabled if you're doing any photo or video editing work. However, the 15-inch model is better when it comes to the display, as in the display is not only larger, so 15.4-inch versus a 13.3-inch display, but it also comes with a higher resolution, so 2800 by 1800 versus 2560 by 1600 on a 13-inch model. And with this high-resolution display on the 15-inch model, you can also use a simulated resolution of 1920 by 1200 versus 1680 by 1050 on a 13-inch model, so you not only get a larger display, but you can also see much more data on the screen thanks to that higher resolution panel on the 15 inch model. And then speaking of the displays, by the way, uh, if you normally use external monitors, the 15 inch model can support two 5K monitors, which is just insane. The 13 inch model can do one 5K monitor, which is still pretty good, uh, but yeah, the 15 inch can do two. And if you care about 4K monitors, the 15 inch supports four 4K monitors. This is at 60 Hertz, of course. Uh, the 13 inch only supports two. So basically, if you if you plan on turning your MacBook into a true workstation with a ton of monitors, then the 15-inch model is a better choice. Okay, so now I think you have a pretty good idea that the 15-inch model is more powerful than the 13-inch one, uh, but adding more monitors was just the beginning. So you see, the main issue with the 13-inch model has always been the processor. It came with a dual-core processor, while the 15-inch model came with a quad-core processor. So anyone who needed the extra cores, they would you know have to get the 15-inch model. Uh, but it's this year is actually, it's, it's quite different. So this year in 2018, the 13-inch model finally comes with a quad-core processor. Not thanks to Apple, by the way, but thanks to Intel's 8-generation processors. And take a look at this. Even the 2018 baseline 13-inch MacBook Pro is more powerful CPU-wise than my uh, 7820HQ 2.9GHz 2017 15-inch quad-core MacBook Pro. So that was the second top-of-the-line MacBook Pro 15-inch from last year. And the 13-inch baseline is more powerful CPU-wise than that which is crazy. However, the 15-inch model now comes with a 6-core processor. So yeah, if you still need those extra cores, the 15-inch model is still a better choice. And by the way, comparing both 2018 15-inch versus 2018 13-inch, CPU-wise, the performance difference is quite substantial between the two. And then speaking of performance difference, the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro now got 32 gigabytes of RAM. Wait, wait, Daniel, in your Elixir Rumors episodes, you said that Apple won't be adding 32 gigabytes of RAM in 2018. You lied. Well, not really. Uh, I said that Apple won't be adding 32 gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory because LPDDR4 is not supported on Intel's Coffee Lake architecture. Only Intel Candle Lake would be supporting this. So what Apple ended up doing was actually using DDR4 instead, instead of LPDDR4, which consumes more power. And in this case, we now have 32 gigabytes of RAM on a 15 inch model, which by the way, Apple could have done this years ago, um, the DR4, but for some reason they haven't done it. So if you care about running multiple virtual machines at the same time, multiple applications that use a lot of memory, then a 15 inch model with 32 gigabytes of RAM is much better, obviously, than the 13 inch, which still maxes out that 16 gigabytes of memory this year. Just like last year, this is all PDR3 memory, like last year. And by the way, to fix the more power hungry processors and also, you know, the more power hungry DDR4 memory on the 15 inch model, Apple added larger batteries on both the 13 and the 15 inch. I personally haven't noticed a considerably better battery on my 15 inch model, uh, but a 13 inch was honestly improved from last year, especially the one with a touch bar. Okay, but aside from a six core processor versus four cores, or 32 gigabytes of RAM versus 16 gigabytes of RAM on a 15 inch model, the biggest difference between the two is actually the GPU. So you see the 13-inch model still comes with an integrated GPU, so that's basically embedded into the processor, while the 15-inch model comes with dedicated graphics, in this case the AMD Radeon Pro 560X. And the 560X is considerably more powerful than the Intel Iris Plus uh, 655 graphics that you get inside a 13-inch model. It's actually about three times more powerful. And for example, this is a real-world example, exporting the same project in Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, the 13-inch model took three times longer to export than not even my 2018 MacBook Pro 15-inch, but my 2017 model, which is crazy. So if you do any 3D modeling, rendering, even video editing, 
and special effects on a daily basis. Well, you should go with a 15 inch model, definitely. And same applies to gaming. If for some reason you want to do a bit of gaming on a Mac, uh, the 15 inch model is going to be a substantially better choice thanks to that dedicated GPU. Uh, however, you can use an external GPU, by the way, on both of these machines. So on eGPU, uh, that's going to be more expensive, but you can do that. I've done a separate video on that. This is the Apple eGPU. This is the Blackmagic GPU that Blackmagic developed in collaboration with Apple. And do watch that video in case you want to know how uh, you know eGPUs work and more on that. Now, that GPU on the 15-inch model does have a pretty big impact on the battery life. So the 15-inch model also comes with an integrated GPU as well. By the way, the UHD graphics, Intel UHD 630. Uh, which is actually weaker fun fact than the 13 inches integrated graphics but a 15 inch would automatically switch to the dedicated amd graphics whenever you know an app requires it and that's when your battery would drain very very quickly okay daniel so in the end which one should we get 13 inch or 15 inch 2018 well in the end if you're a student and you need something that's very portable and you you know go out a lot with your laptop you definitely get a 13 inch model over the 15 inch because the weight difference and the size difference is going to make a huge difference uh, when it comes to carrying this around also if you're a photographer and you travel a lot also get a 30 inch model it's more than powerful enough to handle photoshop or lightroom but if you're a video editor and that's your daily job like you have to export a video every day definitely get a 15 inch model because that's going to make a huge difference in terms of export times and also in terms of uh, timeline fluidity so for example when it comes to export times if a normal export would take 20 minutes on a 13 inch model um, sorry, on the 15 inch model, this would take an hour to export, which is a huge, huge difference. You're wasting 40 minutes every single day. But if, for example, you only do uh, 1080p video editing or even 4K, but you only export one video a month or one video, even one video a week, then, you know, 40 minutes is not going to make that big of a difference. But if you do that every single day and that's your main job, definitely get a 15 inch model because you won't regret it. It's so much more powerful. But yeah, definitely subscribe and enable notifications by tapping on that bell, join the notification squad. If you have enjoyed this video and if you're new to the channel, um, also join the zone by the way become a member and you get some exclusive perks every single month you're also supporting the channel so that's quite cool and you get access to an exclusive live stream in which i will answer your questions we'll hang out talk about tech uh, and you also get those cool badges which actually evolve all over time the longer you've been a subscriber uh, a member for so that's quite cool a link in bio first link click on that or the join button that's also there if you can see it. Uh, you cannot see it on iOS, but yeah, join the zone. Uh, also in the comments, what do you guys think about a 30 inch and the 15 inch 2018? Would you pick one up? Which one and why? What would you use it for? I'm quite curious to read your, your comments on that. Uh, definitely give this a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know, it took quite some time to make. I tried speaking as fast as I could because I had so much stuff to say in this video. Hopefully it's not too long. I have no idea how long this is right now. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel uh, and I'll see you guys in my next one. So in effect, signing out. Cheers.